So let's have a look at basic usage of git commands and we start out with just a single user. So this is what you might use if you're just doing your own project rather than have, using a repository on some remote server. Um, you start a new git project with a git init and what that will do is uh, you, you go into your working directory and it will just add to your working directory a hidden uh, subdirectory called .git and that will be the location of your repository. It will also become what's known your staging area. So in the .git subrepository there is a copy of the part of your working directory um, that is managed by git and you can move into that staging area um, new modified files uh, and this way you can decide which modifications that you have in your working directory will be part of the next commit and which will not and then from that staging area the commit is actually made. So uh, just type git init in an empty uh, directory and you have already a git repository then you want to move files into uh, the repository tell git that they are under version control uh, this is done similarly as in subversion you just type uh, git add file and that will copy the file into your staging area but it's important to understand this is not quite the same as in git because even though you now have uh, earmarked the file for addition and in future git will know that this file is under version control uh, you always before you can commit any change you always have to add that uh, changed file again to this staging area because the commit will only look at what is in your staging area with git status you can see which files are already in the staging area which files have uh, been modified but have not yet been added with git add to the staging area and then <clears throat> with uh, git commit you actually save whatever is in the staging area and add it to the re to the repository and again similar as in subversion git commit will fire up the editor that you have specified in the editor environment variable to enter a commit message but you can also use minus m commit message to do so on the command line so let's have a look in a little terminal example we create ourselves a working directory um, working working directory one and that is empty and now i type git in it and it tells me it has initialized an empty repository and now you can see we have here uh, this dot git directory and now i create a file again file one hello world as before and if i now type git status then it will uh, show me that I am on branch master um, there have been no commits yet and there is in my working directory one untracked file um, that um, isn't under version control yet so I can now do a git add file one and another git status and now you can see here there are no untracked files left and uh, in green here you can see the stages uh, the changes that are to be committed so the green files here are files that have been modified in my staging area and now i run git commit minus, um, adding my first file and we have added our first file. 
at this point if you've used if you've never used git before you may uh, first encounter a warning that you should set your name and your email address in a uh, global configuration file because each commit that we make um, our identity will be recorded as part of the commit there's a field for a name and an email address and if you don't specify that then git doesn't know what to use um, so you can either manually set these in your home directory in tilde slash dot git config or there are commands available uh, git config global user.name is the field that you want to set and you put in your name here and user.email is where you can put your email address. Many people have a dedicated email address uh, just for being uh, reachable uh, or visible in, in git commits because um, if you publish your email address it may solicit some spam depends on how sensitive you are about this. We can now also use the git log command to look at um, the uh, revision history and we can tag something. So if I type git log here, you can see um, this is the name of my commit. This is the output of the SHA-1 secure hash function. Uh, this is the author of the commit, this is the date of the commit, and this here is uh, the text that I have provided. So now uh, let's add something to the file. Have a nice day. And again if I do git status you can now see I have a modified file. Um, it knows that this is a file uh, that is already being uh, tracked so it says these are changes not staged for a commit it's not highlighting the file as, as an untracked file as it did previously so again we do git add file one git commit and now we have our second commit created and we can also give that a name let's say the project is now uh, ready for uh, being released so we say git tag we call it release 1.0 and we want to tag the head of the current branch. This is the last thing that I've committed on, on the current branch. And then if I show you with git log with minus minus graph a <coughs> slightly uh, compact version here um, then you can see uh, this is a, a short version of the identifier of the revision identifier this is just the first uh, couple of hexadecimal digits and you can now see we have this uh, tag associated with this version here we have again the descriptive text and this is still uh, everything is on master And let's do another change. Let's use set for example, an in place edit, replace the word world with humans in file one. And then I can do a git diff. And as before, you can see this line here has been replaced by that line. And we can do another git commit. And you may have seen, I've forgotten to do an A, uh, an, an, an add, git add to move everything into the staging area, but there's a shortcut if you offer in git commit option minus A, then this will automatically add all the files that have 
modifications and that have been added previously where Git already knows that these are to be version tracked. Um, And now we have uh, three commits here. 